Rick Amato on Intelligent Talk 1170 KCBQ. This is T.J. O'Hara, the Common Sense Czar, filling in for Rick Amato. And we now have the privilege of being joined by a good friend of mine, Scott Faulkner. Scott is the executive director of the Dreyfus Initiative. And it would take me the better part of the show to read his background. But to just give you a brief snippet, he's the author of the critically acclaimed bestseller, Naked Emperors. He has articles that have been published in pretty much every major publication of our time, as well as having appeared on virtually every radio show you could name. He's a corporate advisor in strategic, of strategic change and leadership. He works with governments and corporations and emerging economies. National personnel director for the 1980 Reagan-Bush campaign, part of the presidential transition team that served as a member of President Reagan's White House staff. He has had executive positions in the FAA, the GSA, and the Peace Corps. And more recently, he served as the uh, first chief administrative officer of the United States House of Representatives. Uh, that, that put him in control of about a billion dollars of uh, budget and 14,000 employees. His business-based reform saved over $148 million, and that was after actually saving probably about another $40 million or so, $40 or $50 million, and, and automating the House of Representatives with uh, computer technology. And that model has uh, served as a model of operations for 44 national parliaments. He's been named one of the 100 uh, top innovators in America government by the Ford Foundation and Harvard University. Americans for Tax Reform named Scott an outstanding member of Congress. And uh, he had 26 management awards and four presidential letters of commendation. Now, this was as of last week, and I haven't seen him since, so gosh only knows how many he's got since then. So welcome to the show, Scott. Thank you very much. Good to talk to you again. You know, if you were a little less accomplished, it'd be a lot easier to have you on this show. <laughs> <laughs> why, don't, why don't you uh, share with the audience uh, the activities that you and I were participating in in uh, Charlestown, West Virginia, just outside of the D.C. area last weekend. Okay, thank you. The uh, last weekend was the 225th anniversary of the founding of Charlestown, and it's called Charlestown because George Washington's brother, Charles, laid out the city and founded it on September 17, uh, 1786. And, of course, the, the same day in 1787, the U.S. Constitution was uh, approved by the uh, Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia. So it was a fantastic weekend to commemorate the founding of a community, a local community, and also the founding of a national community. And that's what, and so that day was special on three fronts. The first one was uh, Richard Dreyfus, the president and founder of the Dreyfus Initiative, kicked off the uh, commemoration of the uh, Charlestown. Uh, anniversary and then we went all, all went over to happy retreat where he talked about our plans to acquire the uh, the home of charles washington which is called happy retreat and turn it into our global center on the enlightenment and then later that evening he uh, went on to the robert bird center for legislative studies and gave the keynote address for the constitution day Sounds like a full weekend, and, and I think you guys had a few events the day before, didn't you? That is correct. The day before, the, the, the focus of the Dreyfus Initiative is really reaching out to young people to help train them to be effective citizens. So most of the day on Friday was spent actually in the public schools in Jefferson County, which is uh, where Charlestown is the, is the county seat, talking to uh, civics groups and honors social studies students in uh, the two high schools and taking their questions and it was a fantastic time for everybody and let's let's go back to the uh, happy retreat event now you're uh, through the Dreyfus initiative trying to acquire happy retreat that is correct share with the listeners a little bit about the history of happy retreat and uh, what you hope to turn that into for posterity and for uh, the advancement of uh, civics in the United States. All right, thank you. The, there are only three homes in America that were built by George Washington and his brothers where George Washington actually lived for a while. Mount Vernon, which everyone knows, and actually two of his other brothers uh, owned it and, and added to it before George got, uh, uh, got it uh, in his name. And then Harewood, which was Samuel Washington's home, which is still in the Washington family, and then Happy Retreat, 
which was Charles Washington's home, built in 1780 with additions in uh, the 1830s. So it's very special for the initiative because we view George Washington as the indispensable man of our founding. Others may have written more eloquently and spoke more eloquently, but his actions spoke louder than all those words because he stepped back from power as head of the Revolutionary Army. He stepped back from power as President of the United States, and we became the first revolution up to that time to not end in despotism. And so his actions, his moral core, is really a timeless lesson for leaders to this day. And so we wanted to have as the East Coast headquarters for the Dreyfus Initiative and as our headquarters for the our global initiative relating to the Enlightenment to be at a Washington family home. The George Washington Center for the Enlightenment is all about studying the period that led up to and then shaped our founding, which is the, the Enlightenment era itself. As you look through the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and other formative documents written by George Mason in Virginia and other states, these were people who read the Enlightenment scholars. In some cases, they were even tutored by Enlightenment scholars. So when you try to figure out where did, did federalism come from? Where did three branches of government come from? Where did rights inherited by providence or God as opposed to given by government come from? All of these things arose from Enlightenment documents that shaped the founders. Sounds like a uh, tremendous initiative. Now, Scott, yeah. what do you need to be able to secure Happy Retreat? and get this process rolling so we can bring civics back to the United States. Right. The, the asking price for Happy Retreat, which we have under contract right now, is $1.2 million. We have been in the process of raising funds for that. We are still short. And also, one, even with the acquisition, we have it's a 6,300-square-foot house, several outbuildings, 12 acres, there's a lot of restoration that needs to be done to prepare this site for uh, becoming the uh, a center for scholarship that we are hoping. So therefore, uh, uh, people can send us uh, pennies, dimes, nickels, uh, $20 bills or more, to, uh, and they can donate through our website. But we are committed to acquiring this, this house in partnership with Friends of Happy Retreat, which is a private foundation uh, headed by the... Uh, Walter Washington, a direct descendant of Samuel Washington, to, uh, again, bring this house, which had been in private hands outside of the Washington family for the last hundred years, back into the public domain and to become a center for us all. You know, I'm going I'm to give a bigger ask than you did. <laughs> well, you're asking for, uh, you know, pennies, nickels, dimes, and so forth, and I understand we can all contribute, and I think we all should, uh, this project is really critical to the United States. Uh, civics has become a lost art. Uh, our public school systems find other programs that are far less important to the success of our country than the success of our next generation. You know, we're in a, um, an area of people who have been uh, blessed with success, and I'm going to do a special shout-out on this one. If we have any major philanthropists, in the San Diego and greater San Diego community that can make a stronger move than twenty, fifty, a hundred dollars, um, I would really encourage you to get in contact with uh, Scott or someone else at the Dreyfus Initiative. Now, Scott, where, where would they go to uh, make that type of contact and to donate to the cause? The Dreyfus Initiative's website is www.thedreyfusinitiative.org. So just one word, the Dreyfus Initiative dot O-R-G. Well, I hope we have uh, everybody contribute to some regard, but I, I really hope that we have some major uh, potential donors out there that are listening tonight and care enough about this country. Uh, you know, Scott, you and I talk a lot, and you were kind enough. You sent me a, an interesting uh, article by Norm Augustine, and uh, I actually had the opportunity to uh, engage with Norm a few years ago. He's the former chairman and CEO 
of Lockheed Martin, and he was a former undersecretary of the Army. And um, he brought up the issue of civics and how important it is. And we've, in the uh, article, they talked about the weaknesses in the STEM subjects, the perceived weaknesses in science, technology, English, and math. And yet the worst scores of our 12th graders, history. And what Norm suggested in that article was that history has been proven to improve critical thinking and research skills and the ability to communicate clearly and, and cogently. And he emphasized how important that was from a business perspective in his days at uh, Lockheed Martin. So, you know, that kind of ties in to this, this whole issue. And you're not getting uh, tremendous support from our current political system, with which you're very familiar. Uh, why, don't, why don't you share with our audience what you tried to do in the form of a resolution and what transpired? Yes, this goes back to June when Richard Dreyfus was uh, uh, one of the main uh, performers in the uh, annual Ford Theater Gala. He had uh, dinner with uh, Senator Reid, the majority leader. He also had a meeting with uh, Mitch McConnell, the minority leader, during his time here in Washington. And he asked both of them, as he asks every public official, will you go on the record in favor of a more rigorous program of training our citizens, our young people, to be citizens? And they all said yes. And so... He said, okay, I'm going to ask you to put that resolution forward in the Senate uh, before Constitution Day. So over the summer, working with uh, especially Senator Reid's majority office, we crafted a, uh, a resolution. And having worked up on the Hill not only as CAO, but I was a, a chief legislative assistant for several major members back in the 70s before going on with Reagan, I've drafted probably close to 34 bills, amendments, or resolutions that ended up being public law. So I know how to write these things, and I made sure it was as vanilla as possible. It didn't authorize a new program. It didn't imply, even imply money or resources. It just simply said September 17th is Citizenship and Constitution Day, which was both were established formally by Senator Byrd, late Senator Byrd, back in 2004, and that in order to continue to keep the Constitution alive, we should be promoting and supporting a more rigorous training of young people in, in being citizens. And it had a few other words regarding the Dreyfus uh, curriculum and getting to some specifics, but it was basically a very uh, vanilla mom and apple pie resolution. And then a couple weeks ago, we started getting a pushback as this thing went forward because they wanted to move it forward uh, with unanimous consent, if possible, because, number one, it, makes it, it moves it faster, but also they wanted to have every member behind this. And the first thing that had to go was citizenship because they said, well, the uh, certain members of the, on the Republican side would probably raise Obama's citizenship questions and other issues and or the illegal alien issue, and therefore we can't talk about Citizenship Day. And I said, but it's already in the law. It's already an established statute. And they said, uh, can't do it. And I said, fine, get rid of it. What about, and they, I said, then, then go forward with the rest. They, and then a couple of days later, well, we can't go forward with the Constitution. I'm going, what? They <laughs> said, well, the, uh, there's some Tea Party members who are really concerned about you know, how the government, and if, they, and if we talk about embracing the Constitution, they may uh, try to uh, attack it and this and that. And I said, okay, can we at least all agree that on September 17, 1787, the Constitution was approved, and that was probably a good thing. <laughs> and, and they said, let's get back to you. They got back to me a couple of days later and said, even that's too tough within the, uh, to get it done in time for the uh, Constitution Day. So, so, so uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Our House and Senate were not able to agree on the existence, I guess, and, and the importance of the United States Constitution. I wonder what they swear to. We need to return, if anything, uh, you know, uh, Scott, I'm going to go back to the, uh, the Dreyfus Initiative and, and civics. We've got to bring up at least the next generation, if we can't educate ours, we need to bring up the next generation to understand what the Constitution and the Bill of Rights actually says. 
Thanks, Scott. Uh, great discussion. Great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Rick Amato on Intelligent Talk 1170 KCBQ. I hope you have the chance to go to the DreyfusInitiative.org, get more information on tonight's subject. Special thanks, Scott Faulkner, for uh, being with us tonight. And uh, also thanks to Todd in the engineering room and my beautiful bride, Kimberly, for joining me. And special thanks for you. This is the Common Sense Czar, T.J. O'Hara, and I approve of this message. Good night, America. The Rick Amato Show on KCBQ.